Hey friend, we're Lisa Lord and Sarah Jacobson, and this is the Christian Business Breakdown, a podcast for faith-led business owners to start, build, and scale their business, all without second-guessing their every move. We are former teachers turned business owners who finally broke down and let go of trying to run our businesses the way everyone said we should. If you're ready to become the expert in your business and stop trying to do all the things, we've got you covered. You can start with Sarah or level up with Lisa all right here on this one podcast. It's time to set aside your never-ending to-do list, pop in your earbuds, take a deep breath, and join us each week. We equip you with the tools and skills you need to be an empowered CEO, discerning the best strategies to maximize impact and income for your unique business. And we even have a little fun along the way. We love practical business strategies, Jesus, and keeping it real. It's time to break it down. This week on the Christian Business Breakdown, we're talking about photos. And this is a tricky one because I don't want it to seem like it's a whole episode that's talking about why you should hire me as a photographer because it's not, but it is It is how photos are going to make your business easier. And by having good photos that you feel good about are really going to elevate your business. And I'm super excited to give my perspective on this this week because I did not have professional photos. I was trying to just you know, piecemeal it together with selfies and pictures my husband took, which he's a good photographer, but I did not understand the value of photos until Lisa did a branding photo shoot with me. And I am so glad that she did. And I'm so excited to share with you how a branding photo shoot can really, really, truly revolutionize your business. So let's jump into this. I have a funny story for you. So I am a very visual person. I do not know about you, but like my husband will try to explain things to me. Like he has these grand visions in his head and he can explain them. And I am just always like, can you please draw me a picture? Like I, I cannot picture this in my head. I have to see it. And I think that's why I'm a photographer. I have to see it. And I love that creation come to life. So A few years ago, um, I had a a friend who actually homeschooled her kids, and they got to the point in the curriculum where they were talking about sex. And so they, she was trying to impart that wisdom to her kids and just give a really godly perspective of it and just try to explain it without having to, you know, really go into the nitty gritties because, you know, you're at first, you're not telling them all the dirty little details about, about sex. But at the end of when her mom explained it, she just looked at her and she was like, you know what? I think if I could just see it, I would really understand it so much better. And it's just like her little brain just didn't understand. And she thought if she could see it and then you're just like, oh, boy, I did not do a good job. of Okay, Lord, (laughs) the Lord promises he'll give you the words to say. But I just feel like in those situations, it's very awkward. But yes, I do understand exactly what she's saying, that sometimes you just have to see something to fully understand it, to fully visualize it. I also like to have a picture so that I can see what the process is or what, you know, someone's envisioning. And so having a photo, a visual, a graphic um, can always help with what I'm learning. Yeah. And so I think that's why Instagram and Facebook and, you know, all the social media is because we like to be able to see people's lives, see what they're doing. That's why websites are so important because you can get onto the website and see what they're doing and what their business is all about. And therefore... If you're having a hard time explaining what you're doing, you need to have a visual representation of what you do so that people can see that. So your social media and your website, I mean, social media, let's say you decide not to do social media. That's fine. Every business, 100% of businesses have to have a website. If you don't, you really need to get one. And on your website, you need to show people who you are and what you do. And you can explain it with words and all that. But a lot of times, I think they say you have like an average of like 17 seconds to capture people. Oh, I think it's less. Seven seconds. Yeah. To capture people on your website. And if if it's a paragraph of words, they're not going to read it. So you need to have a video or a photo or something that's going to capture people to then read your content to tell people what you do. The solution to this is is photos, right? Right. right. You've got to have photos and you've got to think about what you do as a consumer. When you go on a website, you're scrolling through on your phone, most likely. What are you looking at? You're looking at the pictures. You're looking at the story that the pictures are telling. Whether you're looking, you know, we talk about plumbers a lot or, you know, whether you're looking for someone to build your deck or you're looking for a business coach, those photos need to tell a story that draws you in and that shows you they can offer the solution that you're looking for. Photos are very, very powerful. And there are lots of ways that you can do this. I am not saying you have to spend thousands of dollars on a branding photographer. You can get stock images, but 
as a consumer, when you go onto a website, can you tell their stock images? Yes. A lot of times you can't. Usually. So for some businesses, that might be fine. Like it might be fine to have that. It is communicating what you do. But for other small business owners, having personalized photos really can be helpful. But I don't want to discourage you by saying that you can't have selfies, that you can't use your phone, that you can't have a friend take a couple pictures or have your husband or whatever. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is you have to have photos and they need to be good photos, not just a hasty little iPhone picture. Now, iPhones can take amazing photos, but having someone who knows what they're doing with that photo or editing it really well or whatever is good. I think too that what you'll learn as you become a business owner and work in your business is that it's not just a photo. It's what's in the photo. What's the background? What clothes are you wearing? What props are you holding? All of that is such a great visual representation in your photo. And we talk about a lot on here too, being the expert in your business and communicating that you're the expert in the biz- in your business. And that all comes through in photos. And so selfies are great. I love selfies. We take a lot of selfies in our family. My husband has super long arms, so he's our built-in That's selfie. super star. helpful. <laughs> um, but you know, those photos are good, but, th- but you have to have a mix. You have to have a variety of images that tell this story that people can be drawn into and show that you actually know what you're doing. You had a plan. It's well thought out and that you are an expert in your business. Being an expert and looking professional is really important as you're a business owner, especially if you're charging a decent amount, what you want to be doing. You want to get to the level where you are sustaining your ba- your family and your business. And the more you're doing that, the more legit you have to become and the more legit you come, you have to look legit. And I have seen plenty of people who fake it till they make it and they look really professional and then they start, they skyrocket. And you're like, how did you grow so fast? Well, because I looked professional and legit from the start. And so not that I'm saying the first thing you need to do is, is, is hire a brand photographer. In fact, I had an inquiry from a guy right after Christmas that he was like, hey, I need you to take some photos. And I was like, all right, what's your product? What do you do? And he was like, well, I'm not really sure yet, but I think I'm going to sell candles with poems inside. And I was like, okay. That's fine. That's great. That's what you want to do. Can we take pictures of the candles? And like, he's like, oh, well, I haven't gotten them yet. And I was like, well, then how, how do I take pictures? Like I can take headshots. Yes. But if you're trying to sell that product online, I need to take a picture of it. So it was just the most interesting, fascinating situation. And finally I was like, I don't think that I'm the person for you. And I was able to say no to him because I was just like, that's not what I do. Like, I don't just take your picture. Like I need to tell people what you do and how you do it. And that is what I try to do is to get into your brain and tell your story and to create photos that tell your story. And like over half the photos, you're not going to be looking at the camera because it's going to be the product that you sell or the process that you're doing or it's you working or whatever because a headshot will only get you so far. You can only put so many headshots on your website and your in your Instagram page. He obviously, this client that wanted to work with you, he obviously did not have our ads model. No. (laughs) And he has not worked with you and found the foundation of his business yet. Correct. That's right. Because he doesn't know what he's selling or who he's selling it to or why he's selling it. And so uh, this is just a plug for you to go into our show notes and get our ads model so that you don't end up like Candleman. (laughs) who's trying to hire a photographer <laughs> yeah. who doesn't know what they're doing. Right. And, and and it's the same thing with photos, getting photos done. It has to be the right time in your business. You yes. have to have a certain amount of work foundation done to be able to be ready to have photos, to know what your brand is, to know what colors you're going to wear, to know what kind of style of clothes you're going to wear and where those photos are going to be taken. And so knowing that ads model and being able to analyze in your business and to really be the expert in your business, you need to know when the right time is to get photos. And I would say that it's probably sooner than you think with photos. Yeah. Don't you think, Lisa, people wait way too long in order to get their photos and, and then it's just, it's too late. Yeah. And I was thinking about this the other day that I was like, it's kind of like the whole chicken and the egg thing. It's like, in order to have a website, you need to have photos, but in order to have photos, you need to have a website. And so it's kind of one of those things that is tricky, but I'm working with a client right now who is, she's started her business, but she's just getting her website, but she's having a designer do her website. And what was so helpful is she sent me over the, the designed pages that they have done and we're doing our shoot next week. And so 
I was able, I'm able to look at those pages and go, okay, this is exactly the image that I need to take for her in order to make this page look really awesome. But it could also be that the website designer looks at the photos that I have already taken and goes, oh, well, this will fit perfectly into this one. So it's not like you have to have one or the other first, but if you are just starting a website, it's the perfect time to be getting an arsenal of images that can really elevate your elevate your experience for your website user. And for, like you've mentioned, social media. Yes. There's just so many things that you need photos for, sales pages. Creating a course. Right. Building that cohesive brand from the start. But you kind of have to have done some work ahead of time. And so it really is finding that sweet spot of when you're going to get those pictures taken. I would just say do it sooner rather than later um, because we do live in a visual world. And and I, I found that I kind of started out with those like iPhone photos and, you know, quick shots. And I put them on my websites. I put them on my social media. But then once I got professional pictures taken, I had to go back and redo it and put new ones on there. So I wish I had had pictures taken. I just want to say that having a headshot is not enough. It's a good start. You should have a good headshot for LinkedIn, for your profile pictures, for all of those things. That's a great start. And you don't have to hire a professional for that. You can have a friend take that photo. It just needs to be a good quality photo that's in good lighting, that's not distracting, that maybe fits your brand vibe. And so, but you're eventually you're going to need more than that. You're going to need an arsenal is what I like to say in that you're going to want a variety of photos that are going to serve your needs within your business. So whether that's website copy, whether that's uh, sales pages, whether that's social media, if you have a group of a hundred or more images that are going to help you, it's just going to make everything in your business so much easier. And this is something that I learned from you, Sarah. I knew what I did was valuable, but after we did our branding session, which we actually did like almost a year ago or like eight, nine months ago, um, when we were first just getting to know each other, I did not realize how valuable those images were to you. Yeah. And I would not have been able to express before we had those branding photos. I knew I wanted them, but it was not until after I had them and I started building my website, my sales page, presentations that I do. I love speaking at summits. All of those things require photos and not just photos with me in them, but you took photos of my computer and flat lay and like my favorite mug and my favorite pens. And I use those photos everywhere. And when I go to sit down to create a sales page, to create a presentation, I can do it so much faster and easier. I've gotten so many compliments on my stuff because it all goes together. And and I'm not a branding expert. This isn't actually something that I'm very good at, but having well done photos and having that arsenal, I think you gave me a lot more photos than you normally give people because I have dozens and dozens, hundreds of photos that I can choose from. That And it just makes it easy because the the colors match, my vibe matches, everything goes together and it just has elevated my business and the way that it looks online so much in a way that I couldn't have expressed before I worked with you specifically as a branding photographer. Because I don't know if everybody knows the difference. Like wedding photographers are great wedding photographers. They know how to do that. You don't do that. No. Great. (laughs) Family photographers are awesome at taking family pictures. You need to hire someone that is specifically in the branding field, in the branding business, because this is a different kind of photo experience than having your wedding pictures taken or your newborn pictures taken. So that would be my plug is working with someone who really can help you through this process, especially if you don't know what your vibe is or what your colors are or, you know, what, what kinds of pictures you even need. I wouldn't have even thought about flat lay pictures, but you helped me think through that and here's how you're going to use those. Um, so you, you really do want want to invest in having that full arsenal of of pictures because it's going to make your life so much easier. And we need that in our business. For we sure. need anything that's going to help us make things easier. One thing that I think is really funny too is that we tend to have loyalty to our photographers, which I, as a photographer, I so appreciate. And I actually worked with a gal earlier this year, just at the the beginning of the year. And she said, you know, I have a family photographer that I love that I'm really faithful to, but she is my family photographer and doesn't know how to do, not that she doesn't know how to do branding, but that's not what she is like an expert in. And I was like, yes, please. Like she can be your branding, she can be your family photographer. Like I don't want to become your family photographer. And you can let her know that I am not trying to steal her business from you. 
I am doing what I do so that she can do what she does. Like we're all experts in our own little thing. And if you can't hire an expert, I totally get that. So I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips to help you so that, so that if you can't afford it, or maybe when you are ready to afford it, that you're finding someone that's really going to get what you need. So here's a couple of things that you can do is that I would say make a plan and block off like an entire day. Uh, to do these photos and make a plan walking into the photos. And even if you're taking them yourself with your, with your phone or your husband's with you or whatever, but if you have a plan and you spend an entire day or a half day creating the content, you will be one and done. And you will again, have this arsenal of photos that you can do. And maybe you take, you take a few props, you get your things ready. And so that you, you create things with intentionality. Yeah. I would describe it kind of like your wedding day yes. where you had a list of photos. I want the bride and the groom. I want the mom and the groom. I want, you know, this family shot. I want this picture. I want the rings. You're doing exactly that same thing with a branding shoot. Now, if you have a branding photographer that you've hired, they should be able to help you yes. walk through that of what photos you right. want to take. Absolutely. But if you are just doing it on your own, you can still create that list. Get on Pinterest, find photos that you like so that you can recreate them and create a list. If you already have a website or you already have a sales page, then look through those pages. What kinds of photos do I need? I discovered at my photo shoot that I really needed a picture of like me with my head down, distraught, like on my desk, ready to give up. I can plan for that ahead of time. Let my branding photographer know this is the kind of shot I can find examples on Pinterest so that we can nail that shot in the branding shoot without having to take up too much time. Um, and I can then have the perfect shot to put on my sales page with that, like, you know, distraught business beginner who who's ready to give up. Yep. And even as a photographer myself, I have an ongoing list. I have a Google Doc that has an ongoing list of the photos that I need for my business. Uh, the, the photos that I'm missing, the photos that I'm like, ooh, you know what? I'm going to be launching this or I'm going to be doing that. And I want those photos and I just keep a running list. And so when I hire a branding photographer, which I do, they can, I know exactly what I need to get so that I'm maximizing my time. So create, go through your website, see what you're missing, see what you might want to add, go through your social media. Media, see what you're missing, see what you might want to add, write all those down, and then spend a day creating that content. And also another thing, and this is something I learned from you, Sarah, is that you were telling me, uh, this is back when we first started together, you're like, you know what, I had a really great hair day and I just batched a bunch of reels or I recorded some stuff or I took some photos because I was having a really great hair day. My makeup was done. I just felt really confident in what I was wearing. And so I would, if you have a day like that and you're like, you know what? I, I feel good about myself or I got myself ready. I know I work from home, so I don't, I oftentimes wear my pajamas and like, don't put makeup on while I'm working. So if I'm going to put makeup on and put the effort on, I'm going to do something while I have that, while I have myself put together. And so I'm maximizing that. And so that was something I learned from you that I thought was so funny. Yes. Yes. I have curly hair. And so if you have curly hair, you know, it's kind of like I fix it and then hope for the best. And so when I actually have a day, yes, I just set it aside, take pictures, do reels, change my outfits, um, but feel really good about that. So then I have, you know, some pictures to choose from that were taken over the course of, you know, one day, but I can use them for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And your hair, your hair is going to change, you know, things like that. So you making sure you have updated content too is always really helpful. I know you can't afford to have a branding photographer. Well, maybe you can can. I'm not saying you can't. Uh, some I have some uh, sub, sub, I have some subscription programs um, that you could do that where you're constantly getting updated photos. And if you have a need for that, by all means, I'm happy to provide you with that. But you can also be doing that yourself. So you don't have to. I'm not saying you have to pay thousands of dollars for a branding photographer. It will up level your business if you do. But I know that not everybody can afford that. And when you're just starting out, but creating content with intentionality and creating quality professional looking content will make you make you look and feel legitimate. So I want to share how I got my first branding photo shoot because I did not necessarily have money to pay for, you know, it can be $500, $2,000 and up to get a branding shoot done really well. And so I would not write it off if you're like, I don't have that kind of money. But I would really look for someone that you can partner with and do a swap. And that's how I got mine done was because Lisa was willing to swap. I gave her business coaching. She gave me photos. I gave her a review. I gave her lots of information about my experience with her so that she could uplevel her branding photo experience for her other clients. You can find other people who are looking for that. And if you're willing to make an investment in each other, then you can really both benefit from that. Um, I would not approach 
approach someone that you don't know to just ask cold to to swap, but to to build those relationships, to look how you can help each other out, how you can level each other up. Next week, we're actually going to be talking about finding your business bestie. Um, and, and that can be a great way to swap expertise as well. But don't write off professional photography just because you don't think you can afford it, because there are lots of ways that you can do it, have it look really nice and professional to help level up your business. And maybe when you're starting, you just get the basic level package, which is a smaller package, and then you build onto it from there. I've had lots of clients do that. Like, hey, I'm just starting out my business, but I have a feeling I'm going to grow really fast. So I'm just want to do your bottom package. And then six months from now, let's do another one. And that's that's great. Like you can save up for it. It's a business expense. You can write it off. It's part of your business. So there are there are ways to look at it and just make sure that you're, you don't look, just look at the sticker price and go, oh, can't afford that. Because pictures are going to make you money. Yes. Or lose you money, depending on the quality of your pictures. And so I know a couple of weeks ago, we talked about what programs you need to be investing in your business. You can go back and listen to that episode. But just as important and almost more important are having these good quality pictures that tell the story that help people visualize what you do and just make your make it look professional and like you really do know what you're doing. Yeah, I had a, another coach I've worked with and she has this one photo and she's like, this photo has made me over $100,000. And I'm like, wow, how can you say that? And she's like, I love it. I feel confident about it. I use it on my sales page. I use it to get all my coaching clients. For her, that photo made her over $100,000. So of course that was worth the investment. So how do you know if you are ready to make an investment in professional photography? So here's some questions that you can ask um, in order to see if, if you're ready to make the jump. So have you established your business? This is something that Sarah and I have talked about a lot. Do you have the foundation? Are you just a candle maker who's kind of out there in the wind, like not sure what you're doing? (laughs) Then it's probably not time to invest in in professional photography. But if you have a business plan, you have a business model, you have a website, um, you know what you're selling, you know who you are, what you do, then I would say then it, yes, it's time to invest. Do you have a website? Do you post regularly on social media? Do you have a newsletter? Are you creating a course? Do you run ads? If you run ads, if you have enough money to be running ads, then you have enough money to fire, uh, uh, hire a professional photographer and they will make those ads actually convert. Because if you have a, a not so great photo on there, it's not going to be worth your money to be running those ads. Do you have a sales page? If you said yes to two or more of those questions that I just asked, then it would be a good time to invest some money in branding photographer. And there are a a lot of photographers out there. There's a lot of price points. So you can be looking there and seeing where you're at in your business and where you want to be spending your money. You also want to think about when you are doing these images, investing in a few other things that are really going to make you love your photos. Because like that lady said, you know, her photo made her $100,000. It's because she felt confident in it. She loved it. So there are some things that Lisa helped me do when I did my branding photo shoot that were well worth the investment. One, getting your hair done, having someone professionally do your hair so that you love it, getting your makeup done. Because makeup that you wear every day is different than the makeup that you wear for a photo shoot. So hire a professional makeup artist to do your makeup. You know, you might need to get some false eyelashes. I don't like have eyelashes. So I got false eyelashes. So they actually showed up in the pictures. Um, You know, get your makeup done. Purchase some new clothes that fit really well that you like that are going to match your brand. Yep. My sister was so helpful with this. We did a whole like fashion thing where I, you know, pick, bought a bunch of clothes and picked them out and we we picked out outfits so we had actual outfits planned. You don't want to be deciding that on the photo shoot right. because I don't most people might know this um but when you go to a photo shoot if you're renting a location then you're paying by the hour for that location and you don't want to be wasting time while you're there. You're paying for your photographer for a certain amount of time. Yep. You don't want to waste time while you're there fixing your hair picking out which outfit, which photos did I want to do? You need to have a plan. You need to go into it, you know, much like your wedding, knowing you've got two hours, you need all these photos and and have a checklist so that you can stay on task. But investing in the photographer and then investing in a few of these things like makeup and hair and the right clothes, purchasing some props. Um, I purchased a few props for my photo shoot and I love those pictures. I did some confetti. I had some, you know, stuff on my desk that matched my brand. Um, All of that is going to help you up-level your photos. And so making that investment will be
be even more worth it because you just love them so much. Yeah, feeling confident and having those photos, having a variety of photos helps so much. So being well planned out and and just and your photo if you have a good branding photographer, they are going to help you with all that stuff. Sarah, like I helped you. Here's the props right. you might want to think about. Here's how we combine these things. Here's this the shot list that we're going to get done. You know, I do all of those things for my clients and any good branding photographer should be doing those things as well. So make sure you're vetting your photographer. Make sure you're seeing their work. Make sure that you are comfortable with them. Like you want to make sure that you're have you're having fun because there is emotional attachment to those photos. So you're having fun, that you feel good, that you feel confident, that you feel beautiful, that those fo- those photos are going to look better if you feel better about them when they're being taken. So make sure that you are vetting that person that you're hiring. Yes, for sure. Because, you know, we, we could always say, well, I'm going to wait till I lose 10 pounds oh, or I, you know, need to do this or that or get the right thing. But a good photographer, and I have had both good and not so great photographers, a good photographer is going to make you look good no matter what. Yep. They know how to pose you. They know how to tell you to stick your chin out or to turn your shoulders so that you look good. So vetting that photographer and knowing that you're going to get along, that they're going to be upbeat and have lots of energy so that you can have fun um, and just when you look at those photos, the memory of taking them is also really, really fun. And so I would love to totally plug Lisa if you are in the Denver area to come and get your pictures taken with her. She is amazing. You can follow her on Instagram and see all of the just variety of people um, that she's taken pictures for artists and creatives. She's, you know, like she said before, she's done, you know, a whole plumbing company did photos with her. Um, So she really does know how to do the full gambit of branding photography to walk you through it, whether you've never done it before and you need your hand held kind of like I did, or if you've, you know, are a professional, you've had lots of pictures taken before, she'll be great for you too. And I think too, the other thing that I would really encourage you if you choose Lisa or someone else is to ask them what they do with your photos once you have them. Because just getting, you know, a hundred photos emailed to me is great, but a branding photographer should really be able to walk through now what do I do with them? They should be able to sit with you and say, these are the kinds of photos you want to use on social media. These are the kinds of photos you want to use on your sales page. Put this on your website here to help tell the story. A, A branding photographer as part of their package should be able to help you now use them because you've paid all this money, you've invested all this time, you've bought clothes, you had your hair done. You want to actually use them and know the right way to tell that story. So look for that in your branding photographer when you're hiring them so that you actually get a good return on that investment that you've made. And I do travel as well occasionally. So if you would, if you do not live in the Denver area and you would like me to travel to you, then we can work some of that out because I love to just work with people all over and see their businesses and to be able to record all the aspects of that. So it's just, it's such a fun job. I love working with other business owners and helping them to gr- get create photos, get the photos, and then use the photos afterwards and figuring out because that can, you're like you said, Sarah, it can be really overwhelming. And that's a whole nother podcast we can talk about. Yeah, (laughs) for sure. All right, let's take a moment to break down today's episode. We use the ads model. You can grab our um, freebie that walks you through the ads model in our show notes today. But the um, ads model stands for ADDS. And we have four questions that we ask whenever we are making a decision in our business. And the first letter is A analyze. Does this help your business? And I mean, we don't even have to spend time talking about that. Yes, getting professional photos is going to help your business hands down. Yep. Or any photos, not necessarily. Even if you do them yourself, it's going to help your business. So uh, the first D is discern. Is this the right time for me to be doing this? So if you are starting, just starting out and you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what candle making you're doing, might not be the best time. But candleman. Candleman. But if you're in the middle of doing a website or if you're doing a refresh on your on your brand, um, if you are all of a sudden doing more social media, if you're launching a course, if you're getting ready to do a big sales page, having photos is gonna make doing all of those things so much easier. And so it might be a great time for that. If you're not making money in your business and you can't afford it, maybe, maybe you just need to save for it and start a list. And so you're just like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna revisit this in three months, six months. 
And hopefully I'll be in a better place where I can be doing that. But I think you should kind of evaluate when would be a good time to do that. Then D, decide, am I willing to go all in? If I'm going to hire a branding photographer, do I have the ability right now to do hair and makeup, to get some new clothes, to plan for photos, to be on Pinterest, looking for what kind of shots I want? Get your nails done. Do I have get your nails done. Yeah. My hands were definitely in the pictures. So you want to have nice nails. Um, am I willing to go all in on this or do I just need to do a photo shoot and have a friend take some pictures? Uh, so, so that you can make a good decision about what level of investment you're willing to make. And then, um, S is success. What is the marker that's going to be, is this successful? Did I hire a photographer? Was I happy with the progress? Do I have the photos I need? That is what's going to measure your success as to whether or not, because these photos will help you. They will make your business more legit. They will make you look more professional. And therefore, you can catapult your business to higher levels when you have those things in there. And you can decide when you get those photos back, do I love them? Do they fit my brand? Is this really a successful investment? And hopefully it is. But if it's not, then you know better what you want to do next time. I had some pictures taken and it just they, they are lovely pictures, but it just doesn't match my brand. And so, you know, you can measure that success when you get the pictures and know um, what you want to do for next time. I definitely know what I love and what I use, and I will do more of that the next time I have Lisa take my branding pictures. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we hope this was helpful to you and that you were able to see the value in having good quality photos, whether you take them yourself, you have a friend to take them, or you have a professional branding photographer take them. And hopefully it'll help you know when you're ready to invest and why you should be investing in those things. Thanks so much for joining us today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave us a review. That helps others to find us more easily so we can share the Christian Business Breakdown with more people. Thanks for joining us for today's breakdown. If this episode has empowered you, please leave a review and share with a fellow CEO. Remember, you are the expert of your business, so break it down your way.